Good evening, you handsome lock. Well, we are back to reality and we've got a little Fiesta 2017 1 litre EcoBoost, which is having a bit of a wet belt replacement. Now, before I start the video, who watched the Grand Tour? Hey, eh? So, well, it was a little bit emotional right at the end where they were all walking up that rock towards that tree. It did kind of touch me because, you know, it's been a big part of my life for a long time, especially them three. They were absolutely brilliant together. But however, should we get this car up in the air? And the first thing I'm gonna be doing is getting the exhaust off it. Well, now you can see I've got this vehicle up in the air and a little bit of a bonus. This car has had the front flexi repaired. So it's gonna be easy to remove. It's these little 10 mils and then we can just slide it off. How easy is that gonna be? Now I think that Ford should have designed this exhaust just that little bit better so a bit of an ease of use or ease of removal because these can be a right pain well believe it or not i've now removed all that side of the engine on the air conditioning pump the bolt at the bottom here absolutely flew out no problems whatsoever not even a tiny little bit of corrosion on it now i've got all the heat shield off now i've already put my piccolo engine support and this is an absolute brilliant tool and i have had a lot of people asking how it mounts, well, a little hook that goes through the subframe and the two support arms or bars, whatever you want to call them, go onto the floor pan of the vehicle and it is extendable. So you can put it wherever you want. But yeah, I've now just got to drop the car back down and fingers crossed, all the four bolts on the turbo come undone easy. I think today is going to be a bit of a good day because all them four bolts have come undone Real easy, air conditioning bolts will come undone easy. I think we're gonna be plain sailing from here on. Now, I do need to take the vehicle back up in the air to remove the downpipe, uh, the cat. But before I do, I'm just gonna remove all the rocker cover, uh, inject the rail and the coil packs. Probably put it into a little bit of a time-lapse. As you've just seen me removing that rocker cover. Now, at this point, it, I find it quite crucial when you pull the injector rail off. See the little green washers, uh, ceiling rings? Check all three of them. Because at this point where you can order them, and by the time you're putting it back together, chances are they're probably gonna be with you. So please, just check them because they can split. And if they split, you put it on, you get fuel everywhere. And it makes the job 10 times longer because you've got to wait. Now is a good time to check them. Right, should we make a start on, I'm just gonna remove this uh, throttle body here, a few more little pipes around the back, and then we can make a start on getting the sump off. I think before we take this vehicle up in the air, what I'm gonna do is just lock the camshafts and I'll shut up a bit right now and show you. Cylinder two exhaust, cylinder two exhaust, which is by there, cylinder three inlet, and the tool that we're going to be using is a laser 6952. Now we can get the vehicle up in the air. Well, we've now got this vehicle up in the air. We're going to get the sump off. I've got the cat out of the way, which is just down there in a little pile. Let me show you. So these piles of these cars can soon get big. But anyway, uh, we got some to remove, got some eight mils and two thirteens bolting it to the gearbox. 
Let's get it off and see the condition of that pickup. Now, before I even take this sump off, look, I've spoke to the customer this morning. He's told me that this car has been looked after. And every 10,000 miles, the oil has been replaced. I'm going to say that this pickup is going to be pretty spotless. And I've said all along in many of my videos, it is all down to serving and using the correct oil. There it is, that sump is off. Now, let's get a little pry bar and get this pickup filter out. Oh, I just dropped it on the floor and got bits in it. As you can see, that is pretty. Can get me a little torch? That is spotless. Just goes to prove, looking after them does help the belt and stop it deteriorating. Correct oil, eight to 10,000 mile services. I've now gone ahead, uh, removed the starter motor, locked the flywheel. I've put two little marks on the flywheel to the bell housing so I know that if anything slips, I can visibly, 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 is that a word? I don't know, visibly see if it slipped or not. Now I have connected the torque multiplier, which is a Welsh one. That's it. There is a link in my link tree for it if you're into getting in to doing these wet belts. And I've also marked the crank pulley. Now, many people do say, oh, you can just use a big bar, you can use a big bar, but if you've got the tool, use the tool. And it does make the job. 10 times easier for you. Look at that, effortless. So we're not bending anything, we're not breaking anything. Just simple. Now that crankshaft uh, pulley is now off, uh, we can go ahead and remove the timer cover. Now to remove the timer cover, get yourselves a little bit of a cardboard box. Put all the bolts in because they have different lengths and then you'll know when you're putting them back in, they're all going in the same place. Now, on the back here behind the water pump, just be careful because there's a black plastic housing if you're not careful you will stop it what I'm gonna do I have a little pry bar now going by there I might need two hands I don't know and I should if you've got your bucket right as you prise it off you should catch all that water because we know by now we hate mess on the floor I'm going to get ahead now and get this timing cover off. Right, well, we're going to go ahead now and remove the belt. And how I do it? A pair of pliers. These are wheel cap pliers. Go on the tension around the back there. Squeeze it off. And that is one. All You know, all this work just for this. Now, there is very minimal delamination of the belt, and it's not in that bad condition, to be honest. Now, where's my 10 mil? Just pull the tension off, like so, and also my crank pulley. Pop that out of the way, and now let's just move the oil pump belt. Now I haven't seen one of these fail as of yet. One of these rubber belts, or in fact, I haven't even seen all the ones that I've done. I've never ever ever seen the timing belt. Strip or lose teeth. Strange, because you hear so many horror stories with them. Right, let's get and do some cleaning. Right, well, we've run into a little bit of a problem, not on my side, but more the supply side of things. Now, as you all know, I like to use genuine parts when I'm doing these wet belts. Now, apparently, don't hold me to this, there is a problem with four 
distribution centre or whatever. You, you lot might know better than me. I've been away for a week, so I don't know. Now, I am, I've got the belt kit. I've got the timing belt, the oil pump, tensioner, and a brand new water pump, which I've just fitted to the timing, uh, timing cover now. And I'm waiting on the rubber seal for the timing cover, the thrust washer, the crank bolt, and a crank seal. Now, I, I'm almost, I was almost 100% certain that I had some in stock, but I must have used them all, if that makes sense. So I'm pretty much waiting. So what I've done this morning, um, rather than order one, getting the timing belt is not a problem, but the other bits, I've ordered quite a lot of them because I'm going to be needing them in the upcoming future. So, yeah. I can't even put the timing cover off and let the sealant go off. But we can get the timing belt on. I perhaps I could possibly put the sump on, I don't know. But I do like to put the timing cover on first. Oh well, oh well. Let's plod on. Right, well, we have got some bits which have turned up. Um, that ring which goes on the... Let me get this camera and flip it round. Hang on. It goes on the timing cover. Between the timing cover and the block. And we've also got a new rubber O-ring for that water pipe there, that plastic one. Now, you've probably picked up on it by now. I did call this a thrust washer. It is actually a friction washer. Now, I can go ahead and put that ring on there with a little bit of red rubber grease, and I can at least now get the timing cover on. But I'm still waiting for the crank bolt. I took this, this has absolutely screwed me over. Thoroughly screwed me over. Right, well with that rubber O-ring back in there now with a little bit of red rubber grease, we need to apply some sealant and I am going to be using some BGA. This is probably the best stuff I have ever used. Now, when I'm applying it, if you haven't seen already, I like to put a V in the tip of it. So as you're applying it, you get a good beading all the way around, which I'll show you in a second. A little bit, like that. And you get a nice even application all the way around, just from that V. And don't forget to put some sealant on them two bolt holes by there. Right, well, with that timing cover put back on, like I said, I haven't got my crank bolt as of yet, so I can put that friction washer on, new crankshaft seal, and also we can get the sump back on, cap back on. We're going to have to try and make do with what we've got and put it back together. Um, when I said to you about putting the silicone on, the sealant, making it look perfect if we look inside there let me just press the zoom button it looks inside there factory and it's not messy and the same on the outside as well because there's nothing worse than when you see like a car that's been repaired somewhere and the silicon looks messy i think if you can get it as close to factory as possible the better. That, that's that's my work, my work ethics anyway. So right, I'm going to go ahead now and put the sump on with the same procedure with the sealant, and make sure that you let it go off for a couple of minutes before you bang it back up to the engine. And with the weather being a little bit warmer today, we don't have to wait as long. Well, we have got some good news. Uh, I'll put the cat on, sump back on, the sealant's drying. I'm going to smash out everything else now, um, side of the engine, alternator, air conditioning, stuff like that. And I've just, it's now half past three, and I've just had Fords on the phone to say that my crank bolt has turned up, so I'm sending one of the other lads in to pick it up. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to get this car off the ramp tonight, hopefully. Right, well, the brand new bolt has finally turned up, and without this gent here, this job would never be getting out of the workshop tonight at five o'clock. But however, I'm going to speed on, get this bolt talked up to spec. Hopefully, we are on track. It is now four o'clock. £140 an hour. How much, John? £140 an hour, I'm on. £140 an hour. Plus fat. <laughs> Plus fat. <laughs> well, we are plodding on for, well, good for time, should I say. I reckon 
I've got 32 minutes. I've got the rocker cover to put back on, various little components, um, put some fresh oil in it. I've already put some coolant in it, but can it be running by the time I go home? Let's find out. This is how fine we are cutting it. It's now 10 to five. I haven't even connected the battery up. As you can see, everything is built back together, but I have left the coil packs disconnected. We've got oil, everything's done as it should be and everything's talked up. I'm gonna get on the key now, build the oil pressure up and connect them. And hopefully this car should run. Right, well, I've spun it over, got the oil pressure up. I'm gonna connect the coil packs now and just see if it starts. Let me just have a little look down there. Yeah, everything's, everything is hunky-dory. Let's see if it starts. We've got two choices, haven't we? It either does or it doesn't. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect, sounding like a little singer. Air conditioning fans kicked in. Let's turn it off so the fan goes off. And there we have it. It is now back up and running. I would say that is just in a nick of time. Now that car is ticking over. I think, you know that flexi that was on the cast, the repair? I think it's got a little bit of a blow from there, so I'm gonna have a little investigation in the morning and see what's going on there, because it just sounds as if it's got a little bit of a blow. But yeah, temperature's rising, car's ticking over. It's now, can you see it? Two minutes to five. And that was a close call, and I finish at five o'clock, so I'm gonna leave this tick over while I'm just Put my tools away, wash my hands, switch it off, and we're going to leave it overnight for the sealant to go off. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click that like and subscribe button. And we'll see what we've got in tomorrow. I think I've got a transporter outside, which I need to do a clutch on it. Another one of these, I'm not going to do a video of it because I'm getting, it's getting hard work. It's, it's a lot of time, but doing the videos for these EcoBoosts all the time. Unless the customer requests a video being made, I'm not gonna be making any more. But yeah, please hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow at some point. Let's get it sent.